grace and peace to you. My name is Christina and along with my cat Finn and our worship band Annie Oak and members of our congregation, we are so glad to have this casual worship experience to get us through this time of pandemic and distancing. We are so glad that you are here. And now I invite you, would you pray with me? Be with us now. Gather us to you. Feed us and give us to drink until we want no more. In Jesus' name, we ask all these things. Amen. scripture reading today is about two very necessary, very simple things, food and water. Two things that it seems like the children of Israel didn't have out there in the wilderness, but that God provided for them. So hear the word of the Lord. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out for Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. They said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening, you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning, you shall see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them at twilight, you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, a 
as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs an omer to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so. Some gathered more, some gathered less. But when they measured it, those who had gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered only a little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. And Moses said to them, let no one leave any of it over until morning but they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it until morning and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning, they gathered it as much as each needed, but when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much food, two omers apiece. When all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, this is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil and all that is left over put aside to be kept until morning. So they put it aside until morning as Moses commanded them and it did not become foul and there were no worms in it. Moses said, eat it today for today is the Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. today deal with some of the most elemental things, food and water. And instead of exploring them through my own words, I'd love to introduce you to read to you the words of Daniel Erlander from his book, Manna and Mercy, a brief history of God's unfolding promise to mend the entire universe. We'll be sharing chapter three the Wilderness School. God, the teacher, waited and waited for a teachable moment, a moment which came when God's people grumbled about food. Yahweh responded by showering them with some edible substance called 
What is it? Literally, manna. The way God gave the manna and the way the people gathered it and shared it taught the people how to live as a special people on this earth. Here is what they learned. Lesson one, God gives manna for all. God provided the manna each day. And God's people learned all food is God's. In fact, everything is God's. We owe nothing. We can trust God for daily bread. What happened? The people gathered manna each day for their clan. And they learned that work is the dignified activity of helping God meet the needs of all people. What happened? Larger clans gathered more and smaller clans gathered less. All had enough and no one had too much. What they learned? God gives daily food. So hoarding is unnecessary. Food is for all, not just the big deals or the deserving. God gives enough. We can all live in sufficiency with neither too much nor too little. Daniel Erlander refers to these verses of Exodus, these first chapters as the wilderness school, the school where God said that he would tenderly raise this people, that the nations of the world would notice how these people live and they would see how joyful life could be. And that through these people, the children of Israel, God would teach all nations to live as partners with God. But the first lesson was not all. God taught the people a second lesson when some of the people decided to hoard manna. Evidently, they were attracted to the old pharaohs, Egypt, Egypt's belief that having a pile of food makes one a big deal and brings happiness. But their hoarded manna grew maggots and spoiled. So lesson two, hoarding stinks. What happened? Some people hoarded God's manna. The manna they kept grew maggots ugh, and smelled foul. And what they learned? The Pharaoh's Egypt way, which is accumulating, piling it all up, brings rot and decay and death. The Lord, the creator and the liberator and the teacher had one more great lesson to share with the students of the wilderness school the people of Israel, the lesson of the meaning of Sabbath. God wanted the partner people to receive this beautiful gift of rest and refreshment, this gift of time to enjoy fully what life is all about, friendship with God and others and nature. And so lesson three, that God taught them in the wilderness school was titled The Gift of Sabbath. What happened? No manna fell on the seventh day of the week. Enough manna, though, fell on the sixth day to feed the people on both the sixth day and the seventh. The manna stored for the Sabbath did not rot like the other manna did. What did God's people learn? Humans do not have to work every day to receive and distribute God's manna. The extra time is a beautiful gift of God, which makes it possible for humans and animals and earth to rest. Sabbath allows humans to experience full time the wonder of friendship with God and others in all creation. The Lord asked the people to carry a jar of manna with them throughout their travels and to keep the jar when they settled down in the promised land. This precious jar of manna would remind them of the lessons they had learned in the wilderness school. Lessons like, we own nothing. Everything is God's. All his gift. God gives enough for all to be shared by all. Lessons like hoarding causes rot. It stinks. 
Lessons like work is our helping God distribute the manna, the gift God promises to all. Lessons like God gives rest so that humans can practice full time what life is all about. Friendship with God, friendship with others, friendship with nature, God's creation. God poured out manna day after day, dreaming of a universal manna society, a world where all receive, thank, and share. The Lord dreamed of a world where there are no big deals and little deals, no rich and poor, no oppressors and oppressed. A world where humans live in harmony with all creation, each part living for the good of the whole. The Lord dreamed of shalom, a mended universe. Where are you in the wilderness school? Are you hoarding manna? Maybe finding that it rots if you take more than what you need. Are you embracing the gift of Sabbath? Are you working to help God be partners in sharing God's manna for all? Are you crying out for water, thirsty, needing God to strike a rock and bring you what you need? No matter where you are, you're in good company. And remember these lessons of the wilderness school. We own nothing. All is God's. All is gift. God gives enough for all to be shared by all. Hoarding causes rot. It's rotten. It stinks. Work is helping God distribute this manna. That gift that God promises to all. And God gives rest so that we, human beings, can practice full time what life is all about. Friendship with God, friendship with others, friendship with God's creation.
And now I invite you to join us in prayer. No matter where you are, whether you feel filled up or whether you feel dry and parched as a desert, you are welcome in this space. And now let us pray. O oh Lord, with this psalmist we say, as the deer pants for the water, so our souls long for you. Our hearts and our minds and our bodies cry out for you, the living water, to fill us, to satisfy our thirst, to bring healing, life, love, justice, peace to this hurting world. Lord, sometimes your presence feels like a mountain stream and sometimes it feels more like a hurricane. And sometimes just like the drip, drip, drip of water from a faucet. God, living water Show yourself to us in the midst of our insecurities, in the midst of our weakness, in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our pain. And show yourself especially as healer, comforter, and friend to those we name before you now. O oh Lord, just as the rainbow reminds us that you are kind and compassionate, that no matter how this hurting world falls from you, that you will never destroy it in a flood again. Remind us today as we go about our days of who we are, when we are tired, give us strength. When we are grieving, give us comfort. When we are suffering, give us hope. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus, the water of life. And we pray as he taught us to pray. And we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
you for worshiping with us, no matter what day or what time or where you are. We hope that we'll see you next Sunday at six. And now friends, receive this blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen, friends. Go in peace. We'll see you next Sunday at 6.